I'm Adam Rasmussen. Welcome to Midwest Outdoors. Out on Lake Michigan, just got our line set. Got a good eater in the box. So today I've got a couple buddies and I got Anthony that runs break time uh, for me. And so we're gonna go out and have a little fun and hopefully catch a pile of fish. We don't ever get to fish together, so this is something different. So that one we hooked up on a flasher and a fly, which Generally, I always try to run flashers and flies on my riggers. Uh, 63 down, so gave us a little clue to where they're at. Reset our rigger and see if we can get another bite on it. Probably a little shaker salmon here, good eater. It's good for you to reel in 300 feet of line yeah. right away in the morning. Get a good Popeye forearm workout. So this one came on a lead core on one of our high lines. We've got everything set right now from anywhere from 15, 18 feet down, down to 120. So I want to cover the whole water column. And then once we start getting bites in a certain area, then we'll adjust everything, adjust our dipsies, riggers, you know, to go in conjunction with our high lines and get more baits in that part of the water column. Yeah, that one's one back, I think. Yep. We'll let this guy go and catch him in a couple years. It's good to see those, though. That's the up and coming stock. Another little nursery fish. See on this one. The adipose fin's not clipped on it, so that's a natural fish that most likely came from the other side of the lake over in Michigan. So that's the easiest way to tell if you're catching stockfish or natural fish, watch for that fin to be clipped. So that tells me a lot of where these fish are coming from and the bite's going to get better or worse, um, as well as when all of our resident fish show back up in the fall. So you start seeing the four-year-olds with the clipped adipose fins you know all those fish are coming back in and getting ready to go in and spawn. Got another high line on. A little better fish than the last couple nursery ones. It's actually even a double. Got 10 color and a, another 10 color on. First one's out of the net. Working on the second one. These fish right here are the perfect ones to grill. A little smaller meat, a little less, less to worry about. Bigger ones are a little better for smoking, thicker. Put them right in there. Work on the second fish. Another perfect griller. So these fish right here have really, really hard mouths. Always wanna keep constant pressure on the line because if not, what will happen is, is they'll create a hole in their mouth and basically the barb's useless on that hook. So. Um, Always keeping constant pressure on these fish is the key to getting them in the boat every time. A little nicer fish here on a, a high dipsy diver. Um, we're on two diver setups, one lower, one higher, so that way you can keep one a little bit lower in the water column and one a little bit higher. This one's getting pretty close to the boat. Here he comes running right at us. Uh-oh. Another one that came right off at the back in the net. Just like we were talking about the hard mouths. As soon as he got slack inside that net, came right off. So that one was running right at the boat. So that's where it's nice to have a longer handle on that reel where you can take up line faster. You gotta keep the line tight on them. As soon as they get slack, they can shake the hook and fall off. As you saw that one, as soon as it hit the net, it fell off. So really important to keep up with the fish when they're running at you and keep that line tight so they don't come on button. Does that one feel a little better? No. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of rolled through the nursery here. <laughs> a lot of small fish, so we're going to turn and try to get out of them. And on the hunt for some better ones. Oh, no.